All right, as you're aware, on, at 9.15am on Wednesday the 2nd of March 1994, the explosion occurred at the Office of the National Crime Authority in Adelaide, and as a result, Detective Sergeant Geoffrey Bowen lost his life, and Solicitor Peter Wallace suffered serious injuries. We are all aware that Dominic Perry was later arrested, and there was a subsequent decision by the Director of Public Prosecution to discontinue that prosecution. Over the years, there's been a number of reviews of this case, um, and those reviews weren't able to identify anything that significant to progress the investigation or got it to the point um, where, the where the prosecution could recommence. In September last year, um, Task Force Cornus was formulated with a, a core group of detectives who were handpicked to undertake this review. It's one of the most extensive reviews we've ever undertaken and has had a significant commitment of resources over a very long time. Earlier this year, the review transformed into an active investigation and additional officers were brought in. And we now have got a core group of about 15 specialist officers, but any one, on any one day that could be bolstered with over 30 people working on the case in some capacity. The the review examined uh, not only the original investigation, it examined the coronial investigation, the prosecution, um, many other investigations which um, people who were spoken to in this investigation may have been involved in, and the review identified significant opportunities for investigation. Importantly, um, as it transformed into the investigation, we've been able to identify um, and progress the investigation to a point where we now have a much more complete picture of what happened all those years ago. And the investigation is continuing to pro progress very well. However, we're disappointed that there remains a number of people who've fabricated or withheld information, and those people are a major focus of the investigation, as well as those that were directly responsible for sending the bomb. Importantly, um, since we announced the formation of the investigation in March, we've received 16 calls from Crime Stoppers, and there's one call in particular amongst those that we believe holds critical information that could assist the investigation. On Saturday the 2nd of April this year, at 8.05pm, a person contacted Crime Stoppers and provided information which investigators have been able to satisfy themselves is crucial to the investigation and could contribute to the success of the investigation. That person indicated they would call back and speak to one of the investigators and to date hasn't done so. And today we're appealing to that person to again make contact with police through Crime Stoppers and when they're in Crime Stoppers their call will be transferred to a task force Cornus investigator who has the telephone and is awaiting that person to ring. Um, I'm not in a position to identify whether the person is a male or female because that could put the person at risk, but uh, it's fair to say that if that person watches this um, news story tonight, they will know that it relates to their call. Alternatively, um, if that person doesn't want to ring through Crime Stop, they can make direct contact with the Task Force Cornus investigators through the Safe Old Cold Case website, and we'll provide that um, to you afterwards. Everybody is well aware that there is a $1 million reward available for this, and for people who um, may be around the edges of the investigation, there is the potential for immunities to be sought by people who think they might need them. The new information that's been identified um, has obviously helped us um, further, but um, a lot of the information has come from reinvestigating and taking some of the work that was done before further, and then that's then identified more opportunities, which have then identified more, and so it's flowed on. I can tell you crucially from the over 900 exhibits that have been collected over the years for this job, we've now identified over 100 exhibits which we believe are suitable for further forensic testing due to the advances that have been made in forensic science over the last 20 years. 
and that would include DNA, fingerprints, explosives, trace elements, minerals, all sorts of things. And we think that presents a tremendous opportunity to enable us to solve this case. And we're now in the process of looking worldwide to identify who has the most expertise in relation to all of those forensic disciplines, and then that's where we'll send those exhibits. I can say that some um, forensic examination has commenced, both here and interstate, but I'm not in a position to say further at this time, except that there are promising um, results emerging. We understand that some people may be fearful to come forward, given that this was an attack on a police officer who was killed in a bomb and Peter Wallace injured, but we encourage people to ring forward, you ring us, you have the opportunity to speak confidentially to a very senior investigator with specialist investigation skills and that person is available um, through Crime Stoppers and can be contacted. Um, I'm happy to take some questions. How serious are you about um, the people withholding or fabricating evidence? being the focus of your investigation? Those people are a major focus of the investigation, um, equally as much as those responsible for sending the bomb, um, and for obvious reasons. We have spoken to, started speaking to those people, and we will speak to more. I would encourage those people to look to their conscience, look to their future, and perhaps consider coming forward, um, rather than waiting for us to approach them if they haven't been spoken to already. What date did you say the person contacted Crime so you were feeling comfortable again? Second of April, Saturday the 2nd of April at 8.05pm. How vital is it that they come forward again? That's crucially um, vital because out of all the calls over the years, I can tell you that that is a very, very significant call and could advance the investigation a tremendous amount. Do you believe that person knows who's on the bomb? I won't talk about what that person said, but it's... It's information that we're desperate to have further conversations with that person. You made some comments then about reassuring people that if they do come forward, they'll speak to a very senior officer. Do you believe that person may be fearful about speaking to police? Look, I think, in all honesty, that everybody would be apprehensive given the violent nature of this crime. But there's lots of things that have changed over the last 20 years, and we're in a good position to be able to speak to people confidentially without anybody knowing and working out the best way forward for each individual person. And that'll vary from witness to witness. Can you give any more information about the forensic examination that you said has, has already started? Uh, just that, um, obviously, we've identified um, about 100 exhibits from those 900. Each one of those exhibits has been um, brought out of the various exhibit rooms, has been looked at in detail. The work that's been undertaken before has been reviewed. Um, we've spoken to specialists about the potential um, for today compared to what it was before and based on our own experience over the last 20 years and the advice of experts we've been able to refine that list down to think that there are 100 that are worth resubmitting. It doesn't mean we'll get a result from them all but it means that um, we've got opportunities that never existed before. This, this caller, if they call back, as you know if you have that opportunity to speak with them again, how quickly do you think things will progress once you have done that? Uh, look, we would, as we would with anybody that rings in, we'll move slowly and cautiously, and it's a very, um, it's a very slow, methodical investigation, and it's more like a test match than a one day. But I mean, in terms of where you're at the moment, have you had that conversation? How close are you to? Oh, there's a, a massive amount of work to be done. Um, I guess the success of the review has generated an enormous amount of work um, and we need to make sure that we do everything properly and hopefully one day we're, we're in a position to put out the best possible group that can be assembled for the Director of Public Prosecution. You mentioned the possibility of um, immunities. What are the grounds that you have to consider that? And what's the process? Is that a decision made by police? Or does it no, what, what would happen is if a person felt that they needed an immunity, um, they could approach us, raise that with us, and we'll make those inquiries. But um, certainly what we're interested in is truthful and complete accounts of what a person would know and then we would speak to the Director of Public Prosecution and it's a decision for that person and not the police. But I think it, it's, everybody is committed across all the agencies 
um, to solve in this case. How, how hopeful are you with that happening? I, I think that this investigation gives us the best chance that's existed over the last um, uh, decades to solve this case. We're very, very fortunate. We've got uh, not just the forensic capability that's available today, um, that, that in itself is massive, but we've got lots of other investigation opportunities. Things have changed and, as I say, we've, we've already got a very uh, much more complete picture of what we think happened. Um, and so things are heading in the right direction, but it, it's, it's going to be a slow, methodical approach and nothing that would put anybody in jeopardy or, or jeopardise a future case. Have you spoken to or do you plan to speak to Dominic Perry again? Oh, look, the, like with all of your investigations, you generally do your investigation and it's all about timing. So at some point, um, he obviously would be spoken to again, but that's a long way off. So just to clarify on that point, have you... This sorry. hasn't sort of steered you in any other new direction. It's basically just perhaps reaffirmed... Um, oh, I, I think the significant difference is that um, you'll all know from the committal hearings and the previous court cases what was presented, but I can confidently stand before you and say that I believe that we've got a much clearer picture and a far better understanding of what happened. And we're aiming to do one of the most thorough and comprehensive investigations ever undertaken in the state so that we're able to produce fresh and compelling evidence that um, hopefully builds a very strong case in the future. In terms of that bar that you've got to jump over to get to laying a prosecution, does that change as a result of the fact that this is a case that's being reinvestigated, or do you apply the same tests as you would any brand new case that we've uh, put all, all, all our cases are challenging and hard, and that, that's how they end up with major crime investigation, don't you? And, and realistically, everyone you do, you do the very best you can. Um, whether it's a murder or it's semaphore or Port Adelaide tomorrow, it does, or, or at Bowmont or Springfield, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it is, it doesn't matter who it is. Everyone demands that you do the best. The public expects that. We want to do that. You want to always get a good outcome. So should Dominic Perry be expecting a knock at the door anytime soon or not for a while? Not for a while. And just to confirm, you haven't spoken to him as part of this renewed investigation no. yet? No. And there's no intention to in the, in the foreseeable future.